28 gauge versus 410. We're going to talk about some shotgun shells here on the Ammunition Guides podcast. Hello, friends and lovers. This is Dave Trillo, and you're listening to the Ammunition Guide podcast brought to you by none other than Ammo.com. Chris, the 12 and the 20 get all the love these days, but uh, yep. people often overlook the utility of the tiny shot shells. Uh, we're not talking about the two tiniest shot shells you could possibly buy. True. But these are two little guys. These are the 28 gauge and the 410 bore. Both of them are, are pretty much just small bird shells, although the 410 bore has kind of had a renaissance these days. Dave, you're absolutely right. We're going to talk about that here in just a second. But if you need ammo for either of these, we have them both in stock at ammo.com. Make sure you get your free $20 off coupon down in the pinned comment or in the description box. All we need is that email address. We'll get that sent out right to you so you can get some of these shotgun shells sent right to your doorstep. But yeah, the 410 really kind of exploding lately with uh, the introduction of a couple of revolvers, which is a little surprising. Dave, why don't you talk about that a little bit? Well, the 410 bore shot shell was originally kind of uh, considered the garden gun shell. It was something that estate owners might carry with them when they're going on little walks around their, their vast plantations. So if they saw a squirrel or a little bird, they could shoot it. More recently, Taurus introduced the judge mm -hmm. and Smith & Wesson introduced the governor. Now, both of these revolvers are chambered for 45 Colt, which is kind of a classic revolver round that's uh, not all that popular, but uniquely they could also fire 410 bore shot shells. Yeah. So you had this one revolver that could shoot big revolver rounds and tiny, tiny little shot shells. They became very popular for home defense and, mm -hmm. and they're called glove box revolvers. They're a little too beefy. You keep it in your nightstand, your glove box, and now you've got basically a tiny little shotgun you can use for home defense. How effective it is, whether you should favor it over a different kind of firearm, we're not going to get into it. But all we got to say is both of these revolvers have become immensely popular, which has kind of reinvented the way manufacturers are designing 410 bore ammunition. You know, it really has seen a lot of advancement lately. It's really cool to see that, uh, you know, older, you know, shotgun shell get a little bit of breath of new life and kind of take on a different role because like you were alluding to, usually this was a type of shotgun shell that you use for either really small varmint hunting or primarily teaching kids how to handle a shotgun. Let's switch gears to the 28 gauge because this is one that I wasn't too familiar with before we wrote this article. It wasn't super popular, but it is, again, another option for teaching youth shooters. It has very low recoil, but it's pretty much just loaded with birdshot from what I understand, whereas you were talking about the 410 has a lot of different shot options right now. I think if you look really hard, you might find a couple of slug options in 28 gauge. Okay. You know, 28 gauge used to be an extremely popular shotgun. Uh, back when more Americans would go hunting on the weekends. It, mm -hmm. It's considered spot on for what you want for uh, upland game. Um, if you want to get really technical, just the dimensions of the shot column, it doesn't compact the column quite as much. You get an even tighter pattern. Uh, recoil is basically negligible. Um, people who love the 28 gauge swear by it. It's almost a religion to them. People who try it and just want to go upland game hunting love it. But now that the main use for firearms is for you know, sport shooting and home defense and 28 gauge, which has really no place as a home defense shotgun, just kind of fell by the wayside. Yeah, it's definitely getting hard to find ammunition for it. I mean, the 410 just runs away with ammo availability at this point. Whereas, like you said, 28 gauge is pretty hard to come by. Yeah, uh, you'll find uh, seven and a half number eight and number nine loads. And that's that's only if you're really lucky. It, it's, it's just very unpopular because people don't really want a dedicated shotgun just for just for hunting woodcock on the weekends anymore. Yeah, it's really kind of showcases a difference in the, the thought process on, you know, why we buy firearms and things like that. Most people just want to get that big, you know, like 12 gauge, 20 gauge and just call it a day. But I mean, as far as, again, firearm availability, 410, you're going to find it everywhere. And I think that it uh, it really is, like we talked about earlier, the quintessential youth shotgun. Uh, you can find single shots, pump actions, semi-autos for 410, whereas, you know, a 28 gauge, probably just going to be a pump action if I had to guess. I think you can get some some break action 28 okay. gauges, especially the, 
the, the more classic shotguns. To talk about the relative difference in powers between these two shells, the 410 is kind of a weak thing. Mm -hmm. It can it can push about half an ounce. Just we're talking about like a standard two and a half inch load here. It could push about a half an ounce a shot to just above faster than the speed of sound. Whereas the 28 gauge pretty much doubles the amount of shot pellets compared to a 410 bore. You're really going to see a, a denser pattern when you're when you're going for the 28 gauge, which does make it kind of preferable for taking dove and I think I mentioned woodcock and and partridge and such. To that end, the 410 bore requires a little more skill if you're going to get serious about upland game hunting. It really presents an extra challenge, and I think that's what a lot of people like to use it for. Honestly, if you're very experienced with upland game hunting and things like that, some people really like to make it more challenging, make it more interesting. And moving to a smaller bore shotgun definitely gives you that added level of complexity with taking those birds effectively. Whereas, like you said, a 28 gauge is going to give you a lot better uh, pattern of shot going to be more effective on birds and going to make your life a little bit easier. But of course, the 28 gauge is a bigger shotgun shell. There's no two ways around it. Over a half an inch uh, in diameter as far as an actual caliber is concerned. And this kind of brings up another point, whereas the 28 gauge is measured in gauge, whereas the 410 is actually a caliber designation. And it's the only shotgun shell that I'm aware of that uses that bore diameter. But I looked it up here. The 28 gauge is actually, if we were to move it into caliber designation, 0.545 inches in diameter versus 0.410. So you can see there's a big difference between the 410 and the 28 gauge. But the nice part is, is that the recoil on both of them is very manageable. Even though the 28 gauge is a lot bigger recoil wise, they're actually pretty close to each other. It says it all that you could put the 410 bore in a revolver platform and, and mm -hmm. still fire it one-handed. If you did that with a 12 gauge, you'd, you'd probably start breaking some fingers. That's one benefit to both of these is they're very low recoil, very easy to handle. Uh, but one thing to consider when you are looking at both of these is cost. And neither of these shotgun shells are inexpensive by any stretch of the imagination. When you look at 12 gauge and 20 gauge, which is pretty cheap, you're looking at maybe like 50 cents a shell for... 28 and 410, we're looking at several dollars per shot on these. Yeah, if you get a box of, of cheap 28 gauge target ammo for 20 bucks, you're doing all right. It's wild though. I mean, there's just less raw materials in these shells, but demand is so much lower that it makes them that much more expensive. Definitely. And this actually brings us into another point of one cost saving measure you can look at for both of these is actually reloading. Typically with like 12 and 20 gauge, gauge shotguns, it's not cost effective to reload. You can buy the ammo cheaper than you could reload it, which for me as a reloader is like sacrilege. Uh, I never, <laughs> would never like reload something if I could buy factory new for cheaper. With 410 and 28, man, if you have a reloading press for either of these, make sure you sh save those shotgun holes because you can save quite a bit by rolling your own on these if you know what you're doing. That being said, you're probably going to get a couple firings out of them. Sadly, these shotgun holes just aren't going to last that long, but it still will save you money in the long run. Yeah, and some, some of these shells have uh, pure brass heads, which make mm -hmm. them a little easier to reshape. So the manufacturers do keep that in mind that the 410 and 28 are a little more popular among the hand loading set. Definitely, definitely. So, I mean, let's uh, let's go ahead and close this up, Dave. You know, what are your thoughts on these two? I mean, obviously the 410, lots more ammo options. 28 gauge, a little bit more powerful, better for upland game. What's your pick on these two? People love the 410. And the fact that it's become a more versatile shell just because people, you know, want it more now and you get it in, in more loadings, it, it would be my preference. Uh, the 28 gauge is a little more powerful, but I think if you wanted more power over a 410, then it might as well look to the 20 and 12, which mm -hmm. are going to give you that much more options when it comes to buying ammo. You hate to see the 28 gauge fall into obsolescence. This was once an extremely popular round among American up on gate hunters, but I think nowadays the, the 20 and the 12 just, just kind of do a good enough job giving you similar performance. You could just get a, a light 12 gauge load with like seven over eight ounces a shot loaded to, you know, a barely supersonic muzzle velocity and, and, and get similar enough performance. Whereas the 410 just rules. I agree. Uh, I agree with you on that one. Uh, ammo availability is a huge thing. The worst feeling you can have is you want to go out to the range. Maybe you want to shoot some sporting clays. 
uh, or trap and you can't get any ammo for it. Not that either of these are amazing for those types of sports, or maybe you want to go up on game hunting and you can't find ammo, so it completely torpedoes your weekend. 410, you're going to have a lot more options, a lot more availability. It may be more expensive, but at least you can pull the trigger, which is the, obviously the most important thing. So yeah, my preference has to lean towards the 410 just for the sheer amount of ammo availability for it and the variety of hand, firearms rather out there for it, whether they be brake action, pump action, semi-auto, the 410 has it all. And uh, right now it's really popular and that's going to be my pick. But no matter if you need either of these, make sure again, you click that link down in the description or in the pinned comment, make sure you click that like and subscribe button and we'll see you out on the range.